entrepreneurs. Welcome to another episode of Entrepreneur Fundamentals. My name is Robert Bitto. Today we're going to explore the phrase, we reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. I touched a little bit on this in the video titled, Is the Customer Always Right? So if you saw that video, you can skip by this because I'm going to give pretty much most of the information I covered in half of that video. I thought that this topic deserved its own video, a standalone video, so here it is. Your business is your home. You are a private entity. You should have the right to tell anybody to leave and to refuse service to anyone for any reason. Now, lately, within the, five, the, the past five or ten years, activists have tried to push this a little bit and have used discrimination laws to try to get money or to make a statement or to push some social agenda on us, the little guys, the, the small business people, the backbone of America. These people doing all of this activistic stuff have never owned their own business before. Guaranteed. They don't know what they're talking about. It's a bunch of people who want to tell other people how to live and think that they know best and blah, 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 all of that stuff. You've heard that before. But as a small business owner, even if there's a possibility of some discrimination laws that may exist, that may impact you. You really can refuse service to anyone if you want. Your business is your, like your home. People don't get that if they don't own a business. It's your home. You can invite people in. You can kick people out if you want. It's not really financially prudent to discriminate against large classes of people because you're really concerned about your bottom line. And if you say, I'm going to totally exclude this group and totally exclude that group, and that makes up a quarter of the population, that's not smart, okay? You can refuse service to anyone based on whatever your preferences are or your time constraints, whatever it is. But in this age, you have to be a little bit coy about it, okay? You can't really say what your reasoning is. If somebody's obnoxious, you can throw them out of your store. If somebody is like a homeless person who's just coming in to sit on your furniture and enjoy the air conditioning, you can ask that person to leave because they're not a customer. But even then, I had somebody say to me, you cannot do that to a homeless person because they're a protected class and you're discriminating against a protected class. Once again, I mean, I don't think I'm that dumb, but I don't even understand the whole concept of protected class in the United States of America. I don't know. I thought we were all equal. Protected class? Don't get it. Okay. In my, in my situation, as I talked about in the other video, I don't deal with brides. And I don't deal with brides for a number of reasons. First of all, they're all picky. And... I deal in handcrafted merchandise. Now, if somebody wants to order 24 table centerpieces, they want them exactly the same and this way and that way. And, and I've had experiences in the past, too many experiences with brides and the pickiness of brides and wedding planners who are worse. I've had too many experiences with them just to say, I, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Because Okay, look at it from my perspective as a business owner. Somebody orders, let's say, 24, and this happened, Day of the Dead centerpieces for their tables. Okay, I got three quarters of that order sent back to me because 
the individual paintings on the skirts of these pieces did not match the colors of the wedding. And the bride was all concerned that these would clash with the colors. So I had to accept the return back and accept the return shipping back because it was through eBay. So she alleged that the items were not as described. And so I had to take these back. And so I wasted my time and I wasted money on this. And it's happened to me time and time again. And so I just say, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't help you. And wedding planners are the worst because they always come up to you and say, I negotiate, don't, you know. And so they want to they want to get all these discounts to justify themselves, justify their existence to the bride. Never the groom. The groom doesn't even care most of the time. But so they want to ask for all these discounts and chisel you down and all of this stuff so they can go to the bride and say, look at how good I did. With He wanted $12 per piece and I got him down to 9 I don't have time for that. I don't have time to quibble with people. The price is the price. And then the returns, like I said, I've been doing this for 17 years. At about year 12, you know, when I get messages from people that say, I'm planning a wedding. Can you order for me 30 of these? And I said, I'm sorry, I can't help you. That's it. That's all you have to say. You don't need to give them an explanation. That, that bakery could have said to that lesbian couple, I'm sorry, we can't help you. That's it. And then if they ask why, say, you're being unruly, please leave. That's it. And then the burden of proof would be on the lesbians. You've got to use your heart and your head when you figure things like that out. For me, like I said, I don't deal with brides and that's it. I don't care if they're lesbian or straight or whatever. I don't want to deal with weddings at all. And I fault one person for that. Because she, along with the Disney people, have convinced all these little girls that their wedding day is when they can become a princess too. So everything has to be so perfect. And I don't deal in perfection in my business. Everything is handmade, so there are flaws to different things. No, nothing against the Princess of Wales, but that's where it comes from. I just thought I'd throw that in there. But wherever your refusal comes from, remember that is your right as a capitalist. You can say no. Is it to your advantage to say no to big groups of people? As I said, no. I mean, you want to make money. You've got to be very selective in who you exclude and for what reasons. I mean, even if somebody is being somewhat nasty to you, but they're a big customer, you, you might want to take it if you need the money. But if you don't want to put up with anything, then that's your right. Tell them to leave. You don't have to serve them. And that's that. And any activist who gets in your face and wants to, you know, has an axe to grind or has something to prove, tell them to start their own business from nothing and then come back and talk to you about what you should be doing in your own business. It's amazing to me. I think everybody in America should at least try to run a business for a little while just to see how hard it is. But you're a small business owner, you're the backbone of this economy, and you still can do whatever you want. And that includes refusing service to anyone. Those signs exist for a reason. They do. It's a warning to be polite, be nice, and be a good customer and will be a good business to you. I don't know, maybe I can go on and on about this, but I think I'll stop here. Um, please leave your comments below, good or bad. Give me a thumbs down if you disagree with me. I, it doesn't matter to me. Give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share. And until next time, thank you once again for your attention. And remember to always work hard. And may all of your entrepreneurial dreams come true.